about it. Also, I forgot to explain the double damage. It's pretty self-explanatory. The nice feature, though, is though if you look at the lower right-hand corner, is that it actually shows you how long you have on that particular power-up. There's a J, F, and D. Uh, J is for jetpack, F is for force field, which we'll be seeing later, not a oh, later mission, and D is for double damage. Oh no, it's an ambush. It's a sexy woman with a whip. Or, it's a robot. Yes, it's a uh, kind of a re returning enemy from Land of the Babes with the mechanical female robots. They do quite a bit of damage, they're fairly agile, and they do take quite a bit of damage. But otherwise, they're not really too difficult to take down. Also, I, I think I might have skipped over it, or forgot to mention it, but you might have noticed in some of those barrels back there was actually some green glowy substance, that is the gloop. It will cause you about 15 damage per hit. But, and it took me a while to figure out, if you throw a pipe bomb into it, you can actually dissipate the liquid. Otherwise, there's... You can try jumping over it, but some, in some circumstances, there's really not a good opportunity to jump over it. But, a rather interesting and annoying bug I found out was that, for some reason, if you're playing in windowed mode, the double jump is just damn near impossible to pull off, so I, do I had to resort to actually playing this in full screen. Rather uh, punishing. Also, I'm going to be speeding this up just a little bit because I am good with jumping. And some jumps in this game, especially one much, much later on that is causing me no, no end of pain mostly because of instant death spikes. Um, yeah, the, the jumps can be kind of tricky to judge, especially since basically when you're already falling from the jump, you can't double jump, so you kind of have to time it out rather well. Otherwise, you're just going to do a single jump and, you know, have to speed up your video. But rather tricky secret down here. Get a, another nuke. Uh, Oddly enough, for this particular level, there's actually 11 nukes you can get, but you only actually need to get 10 of them. I think this is the only level that actually does that. I'm not really sure why either, but... Yeah, this... I don't know, this kind of shows one of the main drawbacks of the game overall, is just... It starts to become very... like, some environments start to become very samey. It's... It starts to become rather stupidly repetitive, and uh, I guess that can be kind of a detraction, but, you know, honestly for me, after playing some of these other Duke Nukem games, this one is a breath of fresh air. It controls very well, it looks alright for what it's supposed to be, and it's actually a rather interesting idea, as opposed to... Tomb Raider ripoff or an unnecessary episode for the FPS. So, that's always good at least. And not every level will be as long as this one. Some of them are quite short. Uh, I, I don't want to ruin any of the bosses. Some of the bosses are fairly interesting to say the least. But we just got a lot more scaffolding and fire escape to tra traverse as we continue on through this level. It can actually be fairly dangerous uh, with all the drops that you're not really sure are there and all these explosive guys just waiting to blow you up. They may not seem that dangerous, but whenever they do explode on you, it does cause about 30 damage and I don't know if it's been visible yet, but they do shoot a laser. And that laser does about 20 damage, I'd say. But thankfully, if you're as skillful as I am, then it's not too much of a difficulty. Outside of jumps. Jumps can be difficult. But it leads us to where we inevitably want to go at some point, which is always good. Especially if you're wanting to make sure and get the babe, because guess who's down here? It's Josie and the Pussycats. I am the king of the world, baby. You know, rather awkwardly enough, even though these are kind of 
low res textures, they still kind of shoved in like boob bounce graphics, and that's kind of weird to me. But that is going to be the key card door. That's going to be our exit out of the level. That's another thing about pretty much every one of these levels is it's always a very set objective to find the babe and then find a key card and the level. It's not like I said, it's not bad. It's very simplistic, but it's not always a bad thing to be simplistic, you know. But this particular scaffolding area, oh, area <laughs> can be kind of annoying just because some of these uh, window cleaning apparatus just go way, way down too far. So we are kind of wanting to stay along the top because the key card is actually kind of oddly placed, I suppose. I, I guess in comparison to the previous level where it was kind of just at the end of a long objective, this one is actually dropped by an enemy. That can be a bit hard to figure out, especially if you're not being very aggressive, but, you know, I'm always kind of the aggressor in these games. And I figured I would just speed this up since a lot of it is, you know, a lot of the samey shit we've already seen. So who wants to see it in uh, normal speed, especially when waiting for these you know, goddamn window cleaning things. But we're almost to the end now. As soon as I remember that this is a dead end. Unless I just want some 10 additional health. You may also notice that right now I'm not doing too well on ammunition. That just really goes to show that, you know, even if you're being rather conservative with your bullets, it's still, especially on hard, it can get kind of difficult to save the bullets. But that's the end of the level, we'll see you next time for more Duke Nukem Manhattan Project.